So imagine if you said to yourself, I'm going to mentor someone every six months. Every six months, I'm going to spend steady time every week with someone. OK? What would happen, how many people you think, after every, every six months you mentored someone, and then they went out and mentored someone, how many people after 10 years would be mentored? So let's say in the first six months, it's one-on-one. -on -one. The next six months, it's two-on-two, because two, there's two of you. You've mentored in the first six months. You mentor now. There's two mentors and two protégés. The next year, it's four and four, and then eight and eight. At the end of 10 years, how many do you think would be mentored in the faith? Deep disciples of Jesus. How many? 800 to 1,000. How many? Around 1,000. 10 years. Is this all we're going to get? 1,000? Do 2 to the 20th. That's the only way to figure it out. I had no idea. Someone figured it out once, and I said, how in the world did you figure that out? They said, it's 2 to the 20th. 10 years, split in half, 2 times 2 times 2. Remember exp exponents? I think this is an exponent. Yeah, I know. A long, I want to forget exponents. Oh, Holy Spirit, don't remind me of exponents. <laughs> 2 to the 20th. How many? A little over a million. Okay, Katie, Perkins Katie, you're going to be in ministry? Okay, but you'll be in some form of ministry. And there's going to be a temptation in some form of ministry to see the people out there as an obligation. As like, oh my gosh, i got to get up and go back to work and these 50 people need me. Or these 100 people need me. Or whatever. Imagine a ministry where... Every six months, you took someone willing to be devoted, willing to change, willing to be corrected, one-on-one, -on -one, and said, I'm doing this for six months, and then in six months, you're going to do it too, and we'll do it again together. There would be a million forty-eight thousand five hundred and seventy-six people after only 10 years who are disciples of Jesus, well-trained, not one hour a Sunday morning disciples of Jesus, well-trained, following Jesus. Now, let's say a few people fall out. You may end up with only 173,000. But I can live with that in 10 years. This is how mentoring works, where you begin. It, it's an absolute miracle, 2 to the 20th power. So two of you in 2016, by 2025, become a million. And all of you have a better education than if you're just going to church once a week because there's serious mentoring going on here around scripture, around Jesus, around practices. Now, let's move on. That was just the break, and that's it. So we're going to go back to mentoring. That's it. That's your, that's your PowerPoint slide for this one. I know it's after lunch, so we're going to move back now here. Now, let's look at Philip, part two. Now we're going to look at not the unlikely protege, but really Philip, as a mentor of this unlikely protege in Acts 8, 26 to 40. This is the story of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch, right? Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. In verse 26, the angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go towards the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. That's actually an echo of Isaiah 40. Make a way in the wilderness. So he got up and went. There was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He'd come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? The eunuch replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And the eunuch invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of scripture was, of course, from Isaiah 53. 
We've already seen Isaiah. And then the eunuch asked Philip. I want to look at a few verbs right here that can change your life. Because it takes you from the big picture to the one-on-one -on -one picture. It takes discipleship from the church to you and her. You and him. In the spirit, working together to understand love and practice a life in Jesus. Okay, so look at verse 29. The spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So what did Philip do? And how did he do it? with enthusiasm. He ran. The Spirit said go and Philip ran. He didn't shrug. He didn't shuffle. Okay. Don't want to meet the eunuch. Sure, don't want to meet the Ethiopian eunuch. I'll just take my time and maybe the chariot will get past me. He didn't do that. He didn't even just go. The Spirit didn't say run, the Spirit just said go any which way you want, and Philip ran. To be a good mentor, we have to run. We have to be eager. Secondly, what does Philip do in, verse, in the same verse? What's the next thing? He ran up to it and he listened and heard. Before he joined the chariot, he listened. What do you need to do to be a good mentor? You need to be eager and you need to listen. Then what does he do? What's the next thing he does? I think this should be much more important. I think at football games, Acts 8.30 should be the verse they hold up behind the goalposts. I think it's that important to ministry and life. I think if we could do this, we would be a church on fire in the spirit. So what's the next thing? So what is that? What is he doing there? He asks a question. Isn't that a good mentor? He runs up. He listens. He asks a question. And then the eunuch says, blah, blah, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And Philip answers it. Four things. Very, very simple. He runs. He listens. He asks. He answers. Is it any wonder that the next verb is the eunuchs who invites him in? Who wouldn't want to invite a mentor like that in? Who's eager, who listens, who asks, and who answers? That's why the Spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. Do you want to meaningful relationships that will change the world. We do it one-on-one. -on -one. We don't have to change whole churches. I'm a lay person too. I can't change whole churches. I'm not a minister. I'm not a pastor. I'm not an elder. I'm not a local pastor. I'm just a teacher. But one-on-one, -on -one, I can change things. A million 48,576 things. And that's only the first 10 years. Mentors. You don't have to be the smartest. You don't have to be the brightest bulb. You don't have to be the shiniest apple. You don't have the best teeth. Never had the best teeth. No orthodonture. Always a little self-conscious. Okay? But you have to be eager. You have to listen. You have to ask. You have to do your best to answer. And you know what will happen? Take this for an image of discipleship. An Israeli, right? An Israeli tan guy and a black Ethiopian eunuch sitting together in a chariot with the scroll of Isaiah extended over their knees. You want a better image of what the church should be? I don't know of one. Black, white, foreigner, citizen, scrolls, bouncing along on a wilderness road. It's what the church should be. And you know how it happens? One on one. Because the Spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. Let's look at one more example. One more example. I love this example because it has to do with Priscilla. And I happen to love Priscilla. 
So let's look at Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18, verses 24 to 26. We'll go over this again. Acts 18, and I think I have it on your handout if you need it. 24 to 26. Now there came to Ephesus a Jew named Apollos, a native Alexandrian, a native of Alexandria. He was an eloquent man, well versed in, script, in the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke with burning enthusiasm. By the way, you know what the Greek is behind there? Burning with the spirit. Burning with spirit. They translate it burning with enthusiasm, partly because he hadn't yet been baptized in a certain way, and partly probably because he was a Jew. So translators have a little problem giving a Jewish guy who hasn't baptized the right way the spirit. So he spoke with burning enthusiasm rather than the fire of the spirit. And he taught accurately the things concerning Jesus, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue. But when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained the way of God to him more accurately. There it is, another model of mentoring. What is the first thing that Priscilla and Aquila do? They listen. They heard. Just like Philip. A good mentor, you don't have to have a PhD. You do have to know how to listen. Okay? The second thing they do is what? They took him aside. That is an interesting verb, proslambano in the Greek. I think I put it on your handout here, proslambanein. Let's look at that verb elsewhere in the book of Acts because it's going to change how we interpret this text by looking at this verb elsewhere. Look at Acts chapter 27, 33, and tell me what verb translate this Greek word that we find here of Priscilla and Aquila, taking him aside. 2733. What verb do you think translates this same verb, pros lambano, which occurs in the Priscilla-Aquila passage and this other passage? No! Wouldn't you think so? You'd think so. See? You don't even know. It's almost impossible to figure out. No. Let's try another one. Maybe you can figure this one out. Look at 36. Same verb occurs in 36. No. You'd think so, wouldn't you? you think urge and encourage would be the words. But no. No. Yes. Eating. Go to 28.2. We'll start at 1. After we had reached safety, we then learned that the island was called Malta. This is after a shipwreck. The natives showed us unusual kindness. Since it had begun to rain and was cold, they kindled a fire and welcomed all of us around it welcomed us all around the fire. This word means superb, intense hospitality, usually giving someone a meal. A Tom will understand this. My parents were the kind of people who after church, if there was a guest in church, they would, and my dad wasn't even a, a believing Christian at this point. Happened to be married to my mother, which says a lot. But he wasn't really even, he became a Christian in when I was in college. But he still had this penchant for hospitality and an interest in these things. And so if we had a guest, they'd go to the Jewish deli and buy the meat. They'd go to the Jewish bakery and buy the rye bread and throw it out on the table and invite someone in. That's what Aquila and Priscilla did. Priscilla and Aquila didn't say, oh, come over here to the coffee table and we will straighten you out. <laughs> you know, here's some nice weak Folgers coffee and here's some nice powder creamer. Let's have some of that and we'll tell you all about Jesus. Oh, no, 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 no. When they took him aside, what that means is they took him home and gave him hospitality, probably a lavish meal. I mean, we know these people were hospitable because who stayed with them for 18 months? 
Paul stayed with them for 18 months. These people had to be patient. That man would not have been easy to live with. I mean, he may have been brilliant, he may have been inspired, but he was incorrigible. Yeah, so these people listened to Apollos, they gave him a meal, and it was in the context of a meal and hospitality that they, verb number three, expounded, corrected, taught, explained further. Once he was plied with good wine and good food, Apollos was in a good mood to know what he didn't get quite right. Hospitality. If you want to be a good mentor, you don't have to know your Bible backwards and forwards. You don't have to know Hebrew, and you certainly don't have to know Greek. But you do know, have to cook a, know how to cook a good pot of spaghetti. Fried right? Fried chicken. And a hush puppy wouldn't hurt. When I moved for graduate school down to Durham, North Carolina, my mother and I, she came down with me for some reason, maybe to find an apartment. I shoot, she, the kind I found, she hardly saved me from it. It would have been 10 times worse, but the one I was in wasn't very good. We had cockroach killing fights. <laughs> me and my fourth year resident medical school friend, uh, uh, roommate. Well, we went down and we found this little place on the corner of East Campus that had sweet tea and hush puppies, and I thought I died and gone to heaven. Never had a hush puppy in my life. Never had a grit, either. <laughs> Never had a grit, not one. So if we want to be mentors, right? If we want to mentor and make disciples of all the nations, and if we want to bring the gospel with deep, rooted Christian people, we do a one-on-one. -on -one because the Spirit didn't say to Philip, preach to 10,000. It said, Philip, go to this chariot. And Priscilla and Aquila, they saw Apollos. They listened, they fed him, and they taught him. That's all it took. It doesn't give qualifications of the perfect mentor. It doesn't give qualifications from the perfect protege. But it's pretty simple what you need to do when you look at them. Simon the magician, right? He was willing to be devoted. He was willing to change. He was willing to be corrected. Mentors, Philip, he ran, he listened, he asked, he answered. Priscilla and Aquila, they listened, they cooked, they taught. We do that. We listen to a God and a spirit that says, go to that chariot. And that's what happens. That is how to make disciples of all the nations.